Welcome students. So this uh, demonstration will be for the wrench and we'll start drawing this as we've done the other parts. We'll create a sketch, we'll pick a plane and now we will start drawing circles for the wrench. The first circle I'm gonna locate at the origin and I'm going to dimension it at 20 millimeters. My next circle will be at the handle end of the wrench, and I will dimension that relative to the first, 107, and I will apply the diameter, which is nine. I'm going to draw in a line, and I'll explain why I did it in a moment. This line is going to be a reference line. I've created it as a center line. I've did it, done it basically to constrain this outlying circle relative to the first circle and relative to this axis. After I've done that, I'm going to continue uh, on the left at the wrench head with another circle and at the end of the wrench handle with another circle to which I can now apply some dimensions. 32 millimeters for the wrench head and we will end up at 20 millimeters at the handle end. Now we will add some lines to create the handle of our wrench. That is not a good line. I'll delete that and try again. And you can see my top line has a number of constraints. This one shows that it's vertically constrained, and this one shows that it's tangentially constrained. And between those two, that those fully constrain that line. This one, however, is not it's missing any kind of constraint. So let's apply some. We will use parallel to make it parallel to the top line. And we will use tangent to make it tangent to this circle. And between the combination of those two, you can now see we have that line constrained, which means the sketch is fully defined. Again, I kind of had the same situation here on this line. It is vertically constrained and tangent constrained, but the bottom one, not so much. So let's make it parallel. Let's also make it tangent to the circle. See that did the job. Now I have a fully defined sketch. I just need to trim out the pieces that I won't need, which are there. I'll finish the sketch, I will zoom out, and we'll begin extruding. So it's asking us to select a profile that needs extrusion. We'll select the handle. We're gonna make it a symmetrical extrusion. And we're gonna make the total thickness five millimeters. Yay, we've got a handle, but we did have something maybe unexpected happen. We lost the head of the wrench. It's not a big issue. What we'll do is we'll select the sketch out of the extrusion we created when we made the handle. We'll right click and we will click to make it visible. Now we can select our profiles of the wrench head, symmetrical extrusion. So allow us to make the proper offsets on the top and the bottom face of the handle. So it'll be three millimeters offset from the top and from the bottom, plus the thickness of the handle, which is five millimeters. That gives us 11 millimeters. Click OK. And we'll remove the visibility from the sketch. Now we just need to make this cutout slot. To do that, we'll start a new sketch. We'll create circles for that sketch and we'll start applying spacing relative to the circle that's already defined. So it'll be 15 millimeters 
And between new circles, we've got 57 millimeters. We'll make these each 12 millimeters in diameter. 12 millimeters. You can see that it's not yet constrained to the object that exists. So we'll have to set the center point 10 millimeters in from the edge of the wrench. Like so, and now we'll add the lines that will form the sides of our slot. There you go. We've got this line has a tangent constraint. So let's apply another tangent constraint to it. You see that that's fully constrained at this point. We're going to make the two lines constrained as parallel to each other. And that's fully defined this sketch. I will trim the areas we don't need and I will finish the sketch. Now we can extrude this face. We'll extrude it as a cut and we'll extrude it to a depth of two millimeters. There you go, that's the wrench. I hope you enjoyed and you found this video beneficial.